All right, folks. What we have here are a couple of auto transformers that I wound up today because I was bored out of my mind. So when we take a look at these, these are ferrite toroidal cores. They're FT240s, which means they're 2.4 inches in diameter. And I did something really dumb when I bought these. And I bought these a long time ago. I never put the mix type on here. Pretty sure they are mix 43, uh, like 99.9% .9 sure, but not 100%. Anyhow, I wound these with this Bienteco wire. This is 16 AWG, so it's 16 gauge solid core wire with an enamel coating on there. And when I wound these things, what I did is I have two winds, which would be my primary, and then I have this tap that I put on here. And then I have 12 more wraps. So it's 14 total. And uh, so it would be 14 secondary to primary gives me 7 to 1 ratio, which is a 49 to 1 transformer. We use these on an NFED half-wave dipole type antenna. And the reason I made two of them is, is I want to get these ready to do some testing. We're going to actually do an efficiency test on these things and see how well they perform. So let me go ahead and get these set up in the test configuration, and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about that and what we're going to do. Unleash your creativity with PCBWay.com. Whether you're crafting a prototype or scaling up to full production, PCB Way brings your innovative ideas to life with top-tier services. Enjoy fast turnaround times, reliable worldwide shipping, and exceptional quality at every step. Experience the perfect blend of creativity and value. Visit PCBWay.com today and transform your vision into a reality. Okay, so the first thing that I did with these cores is... I use my Dremel tool to strip some of the enamel coating off the end of this. This is the antenna. This part here where we had the tap is the center conductor. So that would connect to the center conductor of your coaxial cable through an adapter. And then this is the ground here. And what I also did is I put this capacitor. And it is a 100 picofarad capacitor. It's a TKD capacitor that's specifically designed for RF currents. And I just put one on either side. And we add this capacitor because it helps us with higher frequencies. So these are going to be for an antenna that I would probably use 80 through 10 meters. Um, realistically, I'm probably going to do 40 through 10 meters. But again, I just wanted to test the efficiency of these cores. And just to help anybody out who's interested, here is the stuff I got from DigiKey. And you can get the manufacturer part ID and the part number and all that stuff right off of this. You can just go ahead and pause that with my pretty face. And then you can write that down if that's something that you're interested in. I got a box or a bag of, I don't know, 50 of them. Okay, the next thing that we did is that we took our two antenna element connectors and we soldered those together. And then we connected these BNC adapters and then we shorted the grounds together. And what this will allow us to do is to insert a signal through one of these devices. It will travel through the second device and it will come in and we're going to use a nano VNA to measure this. I'll show you how that's going to be set up. And what that allowed me to do is get an insertion loss measurement across two cores. And then what we do is we take that loss, divide it by two, and that tells us how lossy each core is at a particular frequency. So that's the plan. Let me get this mess cleaned up and get that set up and we'll talk some more. Okay, so what we have here is we are going to do what's called an S21 log mag measurement. And what that requires us to do on our nano VNA, this is the nano VNA H4, and it's going to come out, a signal is going to come out of our channel zero. And this is our S11 port. This is our S21 port. S21 means that we are doing a measurement on the second port that is generated on the first. That's the 21. So our signal is going to come out of here, it's going to go up, it's going to traverse through this monstrosity, and it's going to come across into this one, and it's going to come in. And then you can actually see that we have a little bit of a reading on here right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this onto a computer screen so it's a lot easier to read. We're going to use a piece of software called Nano VNA Saver. i got tons of videos on how to use that if, you're something that you're, if it's something that you're interested in. Okay, so what we can see here is Nano VNA Saver, and let's talk a little bit about what we did. So if you look up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the sweep control box, and we did a sweep from 1.5 megahertz all the way through 30 megahertz. That gives us 160 meters through 10 meters. Then 
Below that, you can see that we have 15 segments. So our sweep has been divided into 15 different segments, giving us 18.82 kilohertz per step. Now that's kind of wide, but this is fine for the test that we're doing. And then you can see markers one through seven at various frequencies, one in 80 meters, I'm sorry, one in 160, one in 80, one in 40, one in 30, one in 20, one in 15, and one in 10. Over here on the middle part of the screen, what you can see is our marker tables. Each one of these marker tables has a certain value called S21 gain, and that tells us what our gain was at that particular frequency. And what we do is we divide that by two, and we'll take a look at a chart where we graphed all of this out. But you can see all of our different markers for one through seven here. And then here is our, our chart, our S21 gain chart. And then you can see that across the span, each one of these gray bars represents an amateur radio frequency band. Anyhow, what we're going to do now is we are going to switch over to an Excel sheet where I, well, a picture of an Excel sheet where I divided these by two and graphed everything out. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so what you can see is, oh, I've got a spelling error in the upper left-hand corner where it says war instead of wire, but uh, we used a 16 uh, American wire gauge uh, magnet wire to wrap around our toroid, and then the capacitor was 100 picofarad TKD. And then I've got these color-coded, and actually none of this looks good. And just being honest about it, um, at the 160 meter band, we were at 62% uh, efficiency, and that's, that's terrible. And then at 80, we were around 70%, 71.42 to be exact, efficiency. I guess that's serviceable, but where I'm really concerned about using these would be 40 through 10. And you can see on 40 meters, we are at 76.85 which is starting to enter the realm of, okay, I really would like to see these things be around 85 to 90% efficient. So I'm probably gonna have to go back to the drawing board on these. Maybe I'll make an antenna with these, maybe I won't. Anyhow, 30 meters, we are looking at 79.14%. Uh, 20 meters is our second best at 80.64. Uh, 15 meters, actually 80.69. That was our best uh, band in terms of efficiency. And then we start to drop again in the 10 meter band to 76.35. Down here, you can just see this uh, line that shows the percent efficiencies for bands, 160 through 10 meters. Anyhow, that's going to wrap up the video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. It's much appreciated.